Uh, Britain had its hands uh, in areas where it left, but left behind problems, and it sort of absorbed itself. We, you know, we didn't do it. So I'd like to go uh, back to the beginning, explain, uh, talk about Palestine, and we will hear and discuss the similarities. Um, so first of all, colonialism has been used. What is that? It's the act of power and domination of one nation by acquiring or maintaining full or partial political control over another sovereign nation. The country or nation which comes under the control of another foreign nation is known as a colony of that dominating country. Uh, there was also talk about settler colonialism, which is a type of colonialism in which the indigenous peoples of a colonized region are displaced by settlers. Okay, and as you know, in Kashmir, that is what's happening, what's been happening recently, and in Palestine, uh, it has been happening certainly since 1967 in accordance with, with, with all of these. Now, the thing about settler colonialism, about occupation, is that they are similar but different in different uh, areas. So, and also, the term apartheid, which we use in the Palestinian conflict to describe what the Israeli regime is. It isn't exactly like South Africa, which is when the term was really couched, but uh, there are similarities uh, and differences. For Palestine, as Palestinians, the real, you, you can pick different points in time, but 1897 was an important date because there was a, a, a conference held in Basel in Switzerland in which they, they basically launched Zionism. Uh, and people have different interpretation of what, what that word means. They say it's the self-determination of the Jewish people. If it stopped there, I wouldn't be unhappy because I'm for the uh, uh, right to self-determination of the Palestinian people, of the Kashmiri people, of whoever. But in our case, they added in Palestine. Okay? So the point is that they must have their homeland in Palestine, which most of the ones who were meeting and talking about, about it, and those in Europe, did not come from them. So that's why it is settler colonialism, in that you bring the people in and, and actually displace uh, another people. Uh, a number of key dates, if you like. One of them uh, was something called the sykes pico Agreement, made between France uh, and, and Britain. And I, the reason I mention it is because it's so clearly settler colonialism, or at least colonialism, because basically they took the Middle East and drew lines to create the borders of countries. You, know, like you gentlemen sitting here having a map and saying, oh, this is for you, this is for me. That's how they did it. And we ended up uh, with uh, the Iraq area, Jordan area, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine. But the difference was that the people of these uh, 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 areas, apart from Palestine, became independent in Syria and Lebanon and uh, Jordan, etc. It was only Palestine which the British promised to the Zionist uh, movement in, in, in 1917, in, in what is called the Balfour Declaration, where they actually promised to help the uh, uh, Jewish people establish a homeland in someone else's country, which they, did, they weren't even there at the time. That shows you the arrogance and the, the, the mind of the uh, colonial. So that was 1917. The Palestinian non-Jewish uh, non population, because they were all Palestinians, was only 10%. So they wanted to establish a homeland for Jews in Palestine, where 90% of the population was not Jewish. So that's the way to try and understand it. And in the Balfour Declaration, they referred to us as communities. You're 90%. But you are a, but you are a community. Um, so then the British and the French uh, and others, uh, certainly the British were giving a mandate to rule over Jordan and uh, uh, Palestine, but with a view that the people would become independent. But when they, when they wrote the mandate, the British mandate, they included the Balfour Declaration in the mandate. 
which meant they were saying we will be create, helping create a, a homeland for Jews in Palestine. This is the sort of mentality uh, that we have. So then the British were there until 1948. Zionist terrorism started then because Zionists came in uh, and they were throwing Palestinians out as much as they can. Some came, came and, and occupied land, but others were throwing them out. And in 1948, 750,000 Palestinians were basically thrown out of Palestine, but around 400,000 or so uh, Jews came to Palestine and set up Israel. And when they came, they were literally knocking on doors of Palestinians in Jaffa, telling them they must leave or they would be killed. They would leave, and the, 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 the Jews who came in to take their place, the Jewish Zionists, would go in while the food was still being cooked on the stove. Just imagine, this, this is how they did it. And that's the settler colonialism that we uh, are talking about. Uh, so the, the, the United Nations partitioned Palestine. It gave about 43-44% of the land to the Jews who didn't make up any more than sort of 13% or so of the population. Uh, the Palestinians rejected it, as you might expect. Who would be happy to have have their, their land given to someone else. Uh, and then there was a war. Israel was declared uh, as, a, as a state, but it went beyond the partition plan, which would have given them something like 43, 44%, to occupying 78% of the land. Leaving the Palestinians with 22% of the land, but that was ruled by Jordan and by uh, uh, the Egyptians. Then there was a war in 1967. <coughs> and the first point is that the Arab countries lost it, but more significantly, it was the start of settlements in the West Bank. So that's when they started in Hebron, they built a settlement, which showed you that these people who supposedly came to this area, they just wanted somewhere to be safe, were intent on taking the whole of the land. Otherwise, they could have left it empty, no settlements, and made a peace agreement, and said, okay, now we will leave you coming. No, no, they occupied and they settled and they continued to settle, uh, as you know. Um, then there were lots of events like the, the, the Madrid conference, which followed the uh, Iraq war, the first Iraq war. Uh, and the Palestinians were persuaded to move towards peace negotiations. So don't use the gun. Although, uh, it is in, in international law, and occupied people have a right to resist, including using violence. They were told, don't do that. Why don't you uh, recognize Israel, and you will see very quickly you will get a state. And even Yasser Arafat, who was supposedly uh, a, a good leader and, and a clever man, he fell for it. In that they, in 1988, they said Palestine would be on 22% of the land which was a complete disaster, but it was only the first point on the disaster that, that followed. So the change, and we will hear about legal aspects for Kashmir later, was to say, forget uh, military, go for peace negotiations, and Palestinians have been negotiating effectively since then until now, but they have not got uh, uh, a state uh, that, that they can call uh, their own. But eventually they moved to saying to the Palestinians, why don't you go, the lead, the, or the Palestinians decide to go down the legal route? What does that mean? After the Second World War, international law was created. And the idea was, it was oh, to try and prevent what happened in these wars from happening again to anyone. Including drawing up a genocide convention, because as you know, as you follow the, the news, that's what Israel is being accused of now, is conducting uh, a, a genocide. So the Palestinians accepted uh, or headed towards uh, uh, the legal route. They applied for full membership of the United Nations. The American hand went up, no, with a veto. They applied into the, uh, to go to the General Assembly, which is the bigger grouping in the in the United Nations, and Israel, uh, Palestine was admitted as a, uh, a sort of observer non member state, which allowed them to join something called the International Court, uh, uh, Criminal Court, and, and, and also be able to put cases further to the International uh, Court of Justice. 
So from armed resistance, the Palestinians were told, you will get your state, stop that, go to peace negotiations. They failed.